attacks us with nuclear weapons, danger will come not just from blast or heat or nearby radiation effect, but also from fallout. Fallout, which may occur miles and miles away from the blast. You need to know about fallout, what it is, how to detect it, and what to do to protect yourself against it. Everybody needs to know. Yes, this does mean you. We need to protect astronauts from space radiation. Now, that, that space radiation can come from two, primarily two places. One is from our own sun. Um, it spews out mainly protons, but it also, uh, in th those magnetic fields that come out from the sun also entrain other things. Um, but also from outside the solar system, even it's called galactic cosmic radiation, it is very high energy and it can penetrate spacecraft walls, it penetrates bodies. What we're trying to figure out is how big does that magnetic field have to be in order to protect astronauts inside that magnetic field? And then what materials can we use to, to generate those magnetic fields? How are we going to then package all that into a spacecraft and actually launch it? If we could get this technology to work and, and to be able to keep our astronauts safe on this mission, we could extend the mission or at least keep the astronauts below their radiation limits. This is the first time it's actually been th thought from an engineering point of view all the way through. We can start looking at magnetic shielding and the engineering concerns that go along with that. So we're looking at things like thermal issues. Are we going to have to have a sun shield? How much is that going to weigh? How are we going to attach it to the spacecraft? How are we going to dissipate the heat generated by the humans and all the equipment necessary to keep the magnets cold? Uh, how are we going to handle quenching? How are we going to package all this onto a rocket? How much is it going to weigh? How much, you know, et cetera. The next step then is to create a, de a technology demonstrator that we could, say, launch and put onto International Space Station to, to test out everything actually have a radiation protection experiment on ISS. What did our calculations say versus what real hardware says, which is always something you need to do in new and, new and exciting things that really haven't been done before. You have an enormous amount of radiation in space and potentially it affects film, of course, and of course, as you, as you will well know, it is, its prime effect is on contrast. We took a latent image recorded on the film of a color test chart and exposed it to 8 MeV X-rays. The lowest radiation dose we applied to the film was 25 rem. The latent image, if it hadn't been subjected to radiation, would look like this. A good quality, high contrast, color transparency. After exposure to the 25 rem radiation, the image is almost entirely obliterated. This means, uh, in my estimation, a dose as little as 5 rem would seriously undermine the transparency. It would look significantly fogged. It would be a very thin image. Photographs could survive a journey to the moon and back. In an unprotected camera, in unprotected environment, and the films that were in photographs we have seen as a result of that, it demonstrates absolutely no radiation damage whatsoever. In 1998, IMAX began production on a film about construction of the International Space Station. They flew the cameras up in the space shuttle with their magazines attached, and the IMAX cameras take 70 millimeter roll film. Incidentally, the same film as was used in the Hasselblad still cameras on Apollo. This film had to be protected and it was carried up in lead-lined boxes. According to conspiracy theorists, radiation was the final insurmountable obstacle. Not only would it destroy film, it would kill the astronauts.